One of the experiences that I've had, and, and I'm not unique, uh, the world is changing a little bit, but this notion that the codes of conduct that we have in the West, in Britain, in America, make sense here, but don't necessarily make sense in other cultures. And people will tell you, managers who are under pressure to meet quarterly budgets, to make sales targets and others, say, you don't understand, we have to do business a little different here if we're gonna make the sale. So this is an experience that I think many business leaders have had over the years, and I certainly had my own. I think, again, when I was uh, sort of early on in my business career where I was given responsibility for overseas operations, uh, penetrating markets in Asia Pacific, uh, in the former Soviet Union, as that market began to open back up for us, it was very clear that there were certain calibers of customers, certain kinds of business, and we were a manufacturing company. We primarily sold um, value-added raw materials and intermediate products to companies that made other things, electronics industry, steel producers, and so forth. So we didn't sell to consumers, we sold to other businesses. Usually we sold direct, sometimes we sold through agents. But there, were a, there was a caliber and a category of customer that expected something different. Either you were going to be asked to bribe to get product over a border, or you were going to be asked to bribe maybe couched in less graphic terms to a purchasing agent or the mayor's brother or someone to secure the license to operate that you needed there to make the sale, to secure the property you needed to build your factory and do something like that. And so as I was wrestling with those whole notion and we were as an organization saying, well, hold on a minute, this doesn't feel right. We don't think it's the right thing to do. We don't think it's what our wider stakeholder group would support why this is important business and we don't want to lose it, there must be another way. And so we've got to decide as an organization, are we prepared to sacrifice some sales for our integrity? Are we prepared to punish our people if uh, they violate those rules, even if they're meeting their sales targets? And are we prepared to think about how we deal with people who miss their sales targets if they have held true to the moral code of conduct that we all agreed was the right thing to do. It's on the wall in every office that we had. We didn't always necessarily follow it. And it was a challenging thing to think about how we adjust our incentive programs, how we communicate messages about this, how we, how we celebrated examples where people said, no, that's a line we aren't going to cross. That's not how we do business. And how we also celebrated times when we thought we would lose the business because we weren't prepared to do what was asked and we still got the business. There were moments when I thought to myself, well, will I lose my job if we don't hit these targets, if we don't make these sales, if we don't expand successfully into this market, if my competitors beat me to the punch? What's the risk to me personally? Um, so it's something that everyone has to consider and you have to come to grips with it in your own way. Now those were issues that we faced some time ago. Business face those faces those issues in the spades today because we are living in a digital world. Bad news travels lightning fast. If you are a clothing manufacturer and it turns out that you've got child labor making your garments, even though you have all sorts of rules and procedures to try to make sure that that doesn't happen, you think you've outsourced that to somebody, it will still come back to you. There is almost always an alternative way to do it. You're not going to make every sale. You're not going to satisfy every customer, so you've got to be prepared to let some go. I think every, you know, my advice to any manager or sales rep who finds themselves in this situation is assume what you do eventually will come to light. And how do you feel about that? How comfortable are you with that? And I remember one of my, my first employers told me, um, and he was, a, he, was a, a, he was an aggressive guy, he was a risk taker, but he said, I often think, to myself, what would I do if what I just did was reported on the front page of the New York Times? And it became, and I'm, I suppose many people have something similar, but for us it was the New York Times test. So everything we did, what would, what would people say if it was on the front page of the New York Times? And it was a pretty good yardstick for us uh, to use through that whole process. <laughs>